Hello my friends, welcome to my corner. Happy New Year. I hope you started this year of 2023 very well and I wish you the best uh, throughout this new year. Last year, a year ago, I started with a book haul. That's how I began the year of 2022 and I decided to do the same thing this time. So that's what I'm going to show you. Some books, some movies and some records to, that have accumulated during the last few months. And when I say months, I, I do mean months. Some of these books, some of these movies I bought back in August of last year. So, you know, just wanted to uh, say that. And also to say and to tell you that most of these books I actually bought used. There are only a couple of them that were new. So that's what I do. That's just the way that I uh, approach things. So uh, last year I told you that for Christmas what I do is to get one book, one movie and one record. This time I decided to get a brief uh, text, okay, a short book, because I usually take the opportunity to order a really long book, a really important book. This is an important book, but it's very brief. So uh, I have this one by Sir John Mandeville, The Book of Travels and Marvels. I have not read a lot of travel literature, so I decided to uh, get started, really, with this classic. The movie, I'm gonna have to owe you that one because it's still on the way. I don't know why. It's not really a difficult movie to find. It's actually a Criterion Collection movie, and it is David Cronenberg's Videodrome, one of my favorite movies by Cronenberg, and I think the one that is you know, the, the epitome of his style and the themes that he likes to treat and, and just a visual, you know, masterpiece to me. You will not look at a TV set the same way after watching this movie. So even if you're not a fan of Cronenberg, give it a try. You know, it's, it's uh, one of those movies that you have to experience. And then for the record, what I got this time was Crosby, Stills and Nash, okay, their debut album. I have Deja Vu, with uh, which also has uh, Neil Young, you know. This one is much more um, acoustic, I would say it's, it's like more of a folk music type of record. Deja Vu has a lot more uh, electric sound and all that stuff. So, you know, it, it's I, I really liked it. I just listened to it like literally half an hour ago and I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoy both of them, you know, but uh, this one was very good too. Uh, a few months ago, I did a video on Nathalie Sarot's uh, tropisms. You know, so I decided to keep reading her, and I got Portrait of a, Nun, of a Man Unknown, uh, which is her, her first uh, text that, that could be called a really uh, novel. You know, it's about her father, and this one has a, a preface by Jean-Paul Sartre. I, I'm going to read you a little bit of what he says about Nathalie Sarot, just to, you know, to get an idea of uh, her style and everything, if you're not familiar with it. Um, he says, this is Sartre, he says, the best thing about Nathalie Sarot is her stumbling, groping style with its honesty and numerous misgivings. A style that approaches the object with reverent precautions, withdraws from it suddenly out of a sort of modesty or through timidity before its complexity, then when all is said and done suddenly presents us with the drooling monster, almost without having touched it, through the magic of an image. I'm gonna leave it there, okay? I think that's that's pretty good, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna let Sartre uh, speak for uh, Sarot. I, uh, I'm a big fan of Kurosawa, as you know by now, probably. And I think I, I cannot choose one uh, single movie that is my favorite by him, but one of my favorite movies definitely would be Redbeard. And something that I didn't know when I watched the movie was that it is actually based on a novel or a series of stories about the same character. Now the problem is that that text is not available in English. You can find the copy in French and for many years that's what I thought. I thought, okay, I'm gonna get the French copy someday and I'm gonna read it. But um, my, my French reading sometimes is a little bit slow. A few months ago I was very happy to realize that this text has been translated into Spanish. So that is a lot easier for me. Las Historias del Doctor Barba Roja by Shugoro Yamamoto. So this is what Redbeard, the movie by Kurosawa, is based on. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I have more Japanese uh, literature here, also in Spanish. El Gato que Amaba los Libros. In English, this was a bestseller, was translated as The Cat Who Saved Books. In Spanish, it's The Cat Who Loved Books by Sosuke Natsukawa. Okay, so I'm not really a big fan of bestsellers. Uh, I try to, you know, stay away from them most of the time, but sometimes 
I feel the need to, you know, uh, read a, a bestseller every now and then. And since this one has to do with cats, and, and I'm a big fan of cats, and this, there's a cat here in the cover that actually looks a little bit like one of the cats that I have. You can see him right there. So I thought, you know, this would be a, a very interesting text to check out and, and to just experience a bestseller, um, because I like to do that every now and then. I got the last book that I, the, the book that I was missing by Juan José Saer, Argentine literature, La Vuelta Completa. This was the second novel that he published, but it was actually the first novel that he wrote. And honestly, you can tell, okay, it's not perfect, it's not like his later work, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't get a copy before. Another reason is that it is very difficult to find. So I was finally able to find the copy and I was like, it's the only book by Sire that I'm missing. So I wanted to complete my collection. I read it a long time ago. So it's not like I have to experience it uh, once again, at least not in a hurry. You know, someday I'll probably reread it, but I don't need to do that immediately. This is the book of Tokyo, okay? A collection of short stories, all by Japanese authors. It's by Koma Press, okay? And they have a series, actually. Uh, they have the Book of Rio, the Book of Gaza, the Book of Istanbul, the Book of Liverpool, and the Book of Leeds. This one was very good. I read it a long time ago, and it was another book that I was like, you know, I wish I had a copy of it so that I could go back to the stories. It has stories by, I'll just tell you, you know, some of the names here. Banana Yoshimoto, uh, Toshiyuki, Ho Toshiyuki Horie, who won the Akuragawa Prize. And then you also have, of course, Hitomi Kanehara and Hiromi Kawakami. The, the story by Hiromi Kawakami, The Hut on the Roof, was my absolute favorite from this book. It also has a fantastic cover, you know, so like visually it's, it's really appealing. I went to a used bookstore, uh, I think this was during the summer, I, I can't even remember, it was a very long time ago, and I found this book uh, that has the complete poetry of Cesar Vallejo, great, you know, avant-garde poet from Peru. Uh, it, it, you know, his, his uh, output is not very uh, voluminous here, it's, it's not a lot, you know, but the poetry is very powerful. And I thought, you know, since, we're, since I have this book right here, I'm, I'm going to read you a very short poem just to give you a, a little extra here. This is a famous one, okay? So many people, when you say Cesar Vallejo, this is the first poem that they think about, and it's titled Piedra Negra sobre una piedra blanca. I'm going to read it in the original Spanish. Me moriré en París con aguacero, un día del cual tengo ya el recuerdo. Me moriré en París y no me corro, tal vez un jueves, como es hoy, de otoño. Jueves será porque hoy, jueves, que proso estos versos, los húmeros me he puesto a la mala, y jamás como hoy me he vuelto, con todo mi camino, a verme solo. César Vallejo ha muerto. Le pegaban todos sin que él les haga nada. Le daban duro con un palo y duro también con una soga. Son testigos los días jueves y los huesos húmeros. La soledad, la lluvia, los caminos. Great poet. Okay, so César Vallejo, he has been translated into English and to, into all the major languages. So I urge you to uh, experience his work. I found on clearance a hardcover copy of Evelyn Woe's Bright's Head Revisited. That is a book that is kind of like, uh, you know, mandatory reading for me at least. And I still have not got, gotten the chance to get to it. So I'm looking forward to that one probably this year, you know, at some point. There's a classic by Vance pa Packard, The Hidden Persuaders, about uh, advertising. It's, it's a classic. It was published. Let's see if I can find the, the date. Um, I had um, gotten this book from the library many years ago. Apparently it was first published in 1957. So one of the things that I want to do is to see how relevant and, and how current the ideas are. I am pretty sure that there's a lot of material in this book that is still relevant. Uh, maybe unfortunately, uh, we could say. I really like the 33 and 3rd series, you know, those little books that discuss albums. They're by different authors, so sometimes you don't really know what you're going to get. I have read only one at this point, which is the one for the Pixies, their album Doolittle, you know, that influential uh, alternative album. 
and I just had to get the one about the, the Ramones uh, debut album, of course. The Ramones are my favorite band. Actually, you know, I need to qualify that statement, but I'm not going to do that now because this video is not going to end ever if I start, you know, if I get started on, on the Ramones. But let's just say it that way. So I needed to get that one. And then uh, one day I was, I also went to a used bookstore and I found another book of that same series that I was looking for, which is the one on Michael Jackson's Dangerous. You may have seen this in my video on 10 albums that changed my life. So I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, music critics have to say about these books. I have most of the books by Garcia Marquez, as you can probably imagine, but one of the classics or the important books that I was missing was El Amor en los Tiempos del Cólera. I found this at the library. It was like one dollar. It was a used, as you can see, used uh, book. I I don't know if I'm ever going to reread this or, or if it's going to be, you know, soon. Probably not, but I was like, you know, I, I'm just missing that one. It's not one of my favorites by Garcia Marquez, but it's one of the books that was the most popular with readers, uh, especially readers who like the realist aspect of Garcia Marquez. And, and there is a realist aspect to Garcia Marquez, as you know. You can see it in many of the short stories, some of the novellas, you know. And definitely more of a realism, right, in El Amor en los Tiempos del Cólera than in Cien Años de Soledad, for sure. I have this little book, Mr. Blue by Jack Jacques Poulin. I saw this book in Celia's channel. Okay, so I'm going to link the video where she talks about it. I just saw it there. I like the cover. <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest. I, uh, I started, you know, doing some research into it and I'm like, you know, if it has to do with cats, I'm interested. And then I realized that there's also a connection with the 1001 Nights in this book. So I, I really, you know, want to read it and uh, hopefully I can share my uh, impressions with you once I do that. I have a couple of books from Borges' collection. Okay, the first one is the essay by Attilio Momigliano about the Orlando Furioso. Uh, I do want to read the Orlando Furioso, so this will come in handy, and I want to know what uh, he said about that. And the other one is a book that I have already told you about, Tales of Ise, okay, Ise Monogatari. By uh, here they give the, the name of the author, Ariwara no Narihira, that is not really the author, this is an anonymous book. But since Borges considered it one of the best books he had ever read, he also had it in his collection. And I wanted to see how the book reads in Spanish. I think that would be very interesting. This also I found at a clearance section of a bookstore. It is Hugh Brogan's uh, History of the USA, okay, the Penguin History of the USA. When I took uh, history back when I was in college, one of my professors actually based most of his material on uh, ideas uh, from Hugh Brogan, who was a British historian. So um, I, I finally was able to find a copy of this, and I want to maybe re-encounter that uh, part of my life when I was taking uh, US history classes. Let me show you a few albums now, since I have them here. I uh, This was also at a library, very affordable, right? I have R.E.M.'s Murmur. I believe they're debut album. I'll correct that if it's not, uh, you know, correct. And then I also found at the same place Van Morrison's Moon Dance. I have to say that the R.E.M. album I did not enjoy as much as I was hoping to. Okay, this is the one that has Talk About the Passion, Radio Free Europe, you know. I had their greatest hits album, like the, the first one. And most of the songs that I really liked from this album were the ones that were included in the greatest hits. So that's what I mean when I say I did not enjoy it as much as I was hoping to. It's a very good album. This was something that I got many uh, months ago. It's uh, Surfing with the Alien by Joe Satriani. Really good stuff. If you like guitar, if you like instrumental music, it's, it's just uh, wonderful, wonderful stuff. At the same library that I found the other ones that I just showed you, they had this classic Greatest Hits by New Order. Okay. Great stuff, so I like that too. This was at a bookstore, the also a greatest hits collection by The Jam. You know they have that um, very well-known song, Beat Surrender? Well, that's the last one here in this uh, chronological collection, because at first what they had was more of a punk rock type of style. So uh, it's very good, very good. It, I did not really, I was not familiar with their music, so I was pleasantly surprised. And I got this double CD, Essential, Stevie Ray Vaughan uh, and Double Trouble. Uh, you know, I like guitar once again, so I, I really needed to have something by him, so I was happy to find that. And more recently, I also found at a library sale this here that you will probably recognize. 
uh, this is Achtung Baby by U2. I did not have an actual album by U2, I just had the greatest hits. So uh, I, I felt like, you know, this, this was from 1991, which uh, to me was like musically an important year. You know, you have Nevermind by Nirvana, uh, Dangerous by Michael Jackson, so many, uh, so many records that were important for me uh, by Roxette, um, Joyride, right? So many important records in 1991. So I was like, you know, this, this should be good. And um, the cover reminds me of the Pearl Jam No Code uh, cover. So I, I thought it was, it was a very, very good album. I literally also just listened to it this morning. This morning I, I relaxed a little bit and actually, you know, sat down to listen to some music because it had been a very long time since I had done that. And this was one of the records that I uh, listened to. I haven't shown you a lot of movies yet, but I do have some. I also have this. Look at this. I needed to update uh, or to upgrade my copies of Twin Peaks because I used to have the older version of the show. You know that one that doesn't have the pilot episode? So I was like, you know, so frustrated when I got that one. And I always kept thinking, you know, I need to get the complete box. There's a better one now that includes the newer version of the show. Uh, I'm not really interested in that, I'll be honest with you. So that's why I didn't get that. And uh, this one is enough for me. And it does have the pilot episode. Everything is falling around here as usual. So I got that one. And also to complete the, the cycle, the movie, Twin Peaks Firewalk with me. I really like David Lynch, by the way. I have some, you can see probably some of his movies here, like uh, Wild at Heart, Blue Velvet, and all of those. This was a little book by Canetti that I had read many years ago, Ear Witness, 50 Characters. And I always thought, you know, if I ever find a copy of it, I'll, I'll get it, right? Because uh, I really enjoyed reading it. Basically, it's 50 characters, okay? You get, like, portraits of characters instead of getting a story or, a, you know, a, a whole text uh, that, that features some kind of a plot. You get descriptions of separate characters. It's a really fun book to read, and uh, it just gives you a great idea of the, of, of the beautiful prose uh, that, that Canetti uh, wrote in. I need to read more by Canetti. Okay, I have read Auto da Fe. I, uh, I have copies of Crowds and pa uh, one copy of Crowds and Power that I have not read. I have the first volume of his autobiography. I read his book about Marrakesh, which is very, very short too. So I, I really uh, enjoy him and I want to read more by him. I was missing this. Okay, this is part two of either or by Kierkegaard. So I needed to, to get this one. I have not read part one because I did not have the second part. So I was like, you know, why would I even start if I don't have the other one? So now that I have the complete uh, set, maybe I can read it within the next five years or something like that. Kierkegaard is one of my favorite. It's probably, he's probably my favorite ph philosopher. I don't, I don't know if I can say that. My favorite, it's, it sounds so bad to say something like that, but uh, Kierkegaard is just very important to me. Uh, so is Pascal, you know. But uh, I'll share a little bit more about philosophy with you in a second. And I got some movies also from the library. I have Django Unchained. Okay, I'm also a big fan of Tarantino, so I was uh, delighted to, to find a copy of that. At one point, many years ago, I was really uh, kind of obsessed with Apocalypse Now, but I never had a copy of it. Now, I am probably not as enthusiastic about the movie as I used to be, but I, th I still think it's a good movie, and I was happy to find a copy of that. And it does seem like somebody got rid of all their Tarantino movies, because I also found this. All of these are from the same library sale. I was also missing copies of Kill Bill, so I have volume two right here. And then they also had volume one, fortunately. That's one of the reasons why I did not have this movie, because uh, I would find volume one, but not the second one, or vice versa. So I was like, you know, um, let's wait until I can find both of them. I have this movie right here. It's, it's a movie that was um, nominated for an Academy Award for Best International Picture. I'm going to try to pronounce that. Gel Gelati, maybe? Uh, it's an epic romantic story. This was from Hollywood Video. It has a little little thing right here. So there are still some things from Blockbuster and from Hollywood Video still around. So I look forward to watching this one. It's very long. It's 148 minutes. So I, I can't really remember what was the movie that won the award that year. Apparently this is from 20... Oh, three. Yes, it is. So I, I cannot remember for the life of me which one it was. I'll include it here or someplace so that you can see it. But I know that for that year, the only uh, nominee that I had seen was the movie that actually won. So this will give me a little bit more perspective. 
They also had Mad Max Fury Road, which I really enjoyed a few years ago. And a copy of John Huston's adaptation of Moby Dick, which I was very skeptical about. This is, I still haven't seen it, you know, it's, it's still in the, in the, with the plastic cover. I was very skeptical about that movie back when I first saw it, because my question, and yours, and everybody's, would be how can they ever adapt Moby Dick? Like, how do you do that? Surprisingly, if you just take the story, you know, the, the plot, it, it makes for a very, very good movie. And I think this is a very good adaptation. You know, John Huston is good at adapting texts that are difficult to adapt sometimes. But um, he, he's a, a director that I really enjoy watching. And one book that I, that I found that same time is Hermann Hesse's Narcissus and Goldmund, okay? This is probably uh, with the glass bead game. The, these are the two books by Hermann Hesse that are really, really important that I have not read. I have read all the others, you know, Steppenwolf, uh, Damien, Siddhartha, and a couple more that I cannot recall at the time. But uh, this was one of the, of the important books that I'm missing. So uh, I'm looking forward to reading that in the near future because I have not read Hermann Hesse in a very long time. So. I mentioned this video, uh, this, sorry, this book when in my video about Argentine, no, actually it was not the one about, I, I'm making a few mistakes here now, the one about childhood reading. I told you about Graciela Montes, who was a, an important writer of stories for kids, but then in the year 2005 she went on to win the prestigious Alfaguara prize with this novel, El Turno del Escriba, okay, the turn of the scribe, about the guy who actually wrote down Marco Polo's uh, story. I guess there's a, a kind of a travel theme going on here with Sir John Mandeville and now Marco Polo. So it's a typical postmodern thing, you know, to look at something, a uh, piece of history maybe from the perspective of the other person. So um, I thought that was a cool idea and we'll see how that goes. I had been wanting to watch Bound for Glory for a very long time. I don't know about you, but, um, you know, I like the movie Rocky, but, but I still cannot wrap my head around the fact that it won the Academy Award, especially when you consider that it was the same year as Taxi Driver, All the President's Men, Network, you know? Uh, what was the other one that was nominated? I, I, this was one of the other movies that was nominated. And I thought, you know, let me watch this one to see if I like this one better than Rocky too, because all of the others, that was basically the case. This is the story of Woody Guthrie, okay? It's a great movie, it's by Hal Ashby, okay? Great movie, but personally, I did not like it. You know what I mean? When, when you have that situation where you're like, this is a masterpiece, but for some reason, I don't like it. So it is a masterpiece, it's very well done. I do recommend it, but personally, um, I don't know. It just, just didn't, didn't speak to me. This is an Argentine movie, okay? Lost Embrace. Uh, the title is different in Spanish. It's titled El Abrazo Partido. And if you want to watch a movie about the Argentine Jewish community, which is like a huge and very influential community, very important culturally and in many other aspects, and also cinematically, they were and they are, you know, very important when it comes to our cinema. This is by Daniel Burman. Great story, uh, great characters, and, and a very well done film. It's a little bit older, you know, uh, from a few years back, maybe from the 2001, 2003, something like that. Actually, I can check for you. Let's not be lazy here. It's from 2004, okay, and I have the Canadian copy, which is, which is very good. I also found Nebraska. I really like this movie, so I was like, you know, I can watch it again, and I have that. One book that I've been wanting to read for a very long time is The Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain because it deals with a kind of a doppelganger uh, story and I love that so you know here it is and uh, I wish I could read that soon I'm gonna do my best this one is very good the philosophy of Nietzsche because it has excerpts from his work um, not really you know excerpts uh, let me put it this way it's not divided by book or anything like that but it's divided by topic so it has like a thematic approach you have you know, autobiographical writings, the prefaces, the Greeks, the Germans, history, uh, music, famous men, the spirit of modernity, aristocratic radicalism, and other topics, truth and illusion, topics like that. And within those uh, categories, they give you quotes from Nietzsche's work. So I thought that approach is very, very um, reader friendly. If you want to know what Nietzsche said about a given topic or within a, a given, you know, category, then that's very easy. 
uh, it's a very easy way to approach his work. I found a copy of Five Easy Pieces, one of my favorite movies, and according to Roger Ebert, if you read his uh, review, if you're wondering actually whether to watch this movie or not, Roger Ebert's review will probably, you know, tell you whether you need to watch it or not. He said, this is basically the movie that began the, the what we know these days as the indie movie. You know those movies like Richard Linklater, that kind of thing? Um, this was the movie that started that tradition. And, and I, I can see why he said that. I kind of, you know, I agree with that. I really like the movies of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers when I feel like watching something a little bit older. And Swing Time is one of the best. It is also included in Roger Ebert's list of great movies, just like uh, Five Easy, Easy Pieces is. So Swing Time, you know, Top Hat, Shall We Dance, all of those I really enjoy. So I want to watch this one again. And those two were on clearance, actually. They were like two dollars. Now, I saved the best for last. Actually, you know, saying the best is kind of, once again, an unqualified statement. But um, as I've said before, I really like the modern library. Okay, especially these editions, like the one that I'm showing you right now. And as you can imagine, because some of these are out of print, it's very difficult to find, for instance, if you wanted to have the complete, you know, uh, In Search of Lost Time by Marcel Proust, it would be very difficult to find them. So I have been, you know, getting those volumes like little by little through the years. And a couple of days ago, I was very, very fortunate to find the last volume of his work. Okay, so this is Time Regained, and it also has a guide to Proust, which is also thematic. You know, it gives you, you know, it tells you about characters, where you can find them, persons, places, themes, and it gives you like the page numbers and, and everything. So it's a really, really uh, invaluable resource, I would say. I am missing a couple of these uh, still. I am missing volumes two and volumes three. So as I said, you know, little by little. This one was not too expensive. And the one for Sodom and Gomorrah, I actually found at a library sale in the afternoon. So when everybody had been through that sale, nobody realized that that book was there. And it was like only, I don't know, $2 or something like that. So I was very uh, lucky when it came to that one. So you can see uh, some books, some movies that I bought uh, this year and I am running out of time with the video so I'm gonna have to stop it here. Please let me know what you think if you have read any of these books, seen any of these movies or listened to any of these uh, songs or any of these albums. As always I welcome your comments, recommendations, recipes and everything. Once again I hope you have a fantastic year. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.